Hi there, this is Marlena from A Pen and a Purpose, and today I'm going to show you Procreate 5.3 on the new iPad using the new hover feature. Some of the new features in Procreate 5.3 can be used on the older iPads, but unfortunately most require the new iPad. In this video, I'm going to show you the new functions and kind of talk about my thoughts about them so far. In order to get the hover function to work appropriately on your iPad, you're going to have to go into your settings and go to the Apple Pencil settings. So there's a couple new things here. There is show effects when using pencil and allow double tap only with pencil hover. Turn both of those on. Actually, I think this allow double tap only with pencil hover is very interesting. I've never really used the double tap because I was always hitting it by accident. But with this new functionality, the double tap will only work when you're in the hover range, which is pretty close to the screen. So I'm gonna go into Procreate and show you some of the functions within Procreate 5.3. The first thing that you'll see is that if I'm in the gallery, and I touch my stacks or I, I hover above my stacks, they sort of open a little bit to show you what's in those stacks. If I had something that had animation, I'd be able to hover and it would show that animation, but I don't have anything right now. So instead what I'll show you is if I hover above one of my artworks, you can see the time-lapse video starts going. So you can look at that and that is pretty neat, something that you could totally get lost in a black hole around. I love watching these. So to me, that's pretty fun. But I'm going to start a new canvas so that I can show you some of the new features within this Procreate 5.3. And I'm going to select a, a stamp brush just to start out with. So the way that this works is I have a color selected and I'm going to hover my pencil above the screen and I can actually make it larger or smaller by pinching in and out on the screen. I can also lower the opacity of that brush and increase the opacity of that brush by moving my finger up and down. I think that this is pretty cool, especially when you're trying to find something, you know, on maybe a journal page or something like that. You're trying to put a stamp in the appropriate place. You don't have to guess, you can see exactly what it's gonna look like. So that's pretty nice. And then for a regular brush, I'm just gonna go up to my recent menu. So I'm going to use this monoline big that I created. And again, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, and it's gonna show me what it's gonna look like on my screen. The way to get to that is to go into your wrench menu, hit preferences, and turn on your brush cursor. The brush cursor allows you to see the hover. And then you can go inside of this advanced cursor settings. And in there, you can change some things around this brush cursor. You can have it so that you only see it when you're hovering. You can see it only while you're painting, which would put a circle around it or show you like the, the shape of the brush while you're painting, or you could do both. I have mine on only with hovering because that's what I'm playing with right now. And then the second function that you can change is the outline style. You can have high contrast outline. Let me just change to a different brush with a different color so that I can show you what this would be like. So I'm going to select airbrushing. So when I'm on airbrush and I hover, you can see the giant circle in, in a kind of transparent color that is within this advanced cursor settings that's because i have active color showing so my hover function is going to show in whatever color i have currently selected this is cool because if i put it down you, you can see that it was showing me what it's going to look like when i select that if i go back to advanced color or cursor settings and put high contrast you can see that it has it still shows me the pink color, but it has a darker circle around it. So it's a darker picture of what the shape of the brush is going to look like. The other thing you could do is go per brush. So you could have it where only some brushes hover and others don't, etc. So I'm going to put mine back on active color because that's what I like. 
And I'm just gonna show you a little bit more with this functionality. So I'm going to select this one. And again, you can see what that's gonna look like when I put it down. Let's say I wanna have like a watercolor drip happening here. I can make it a little bit smaller, figure out where I wanna put it, etc. It doesn't allow you when you're doing that preview to like twist it or anything like that. You'd have to put that on another layer and then use your selection tool as usual for that. The eraser does something similar. So you can see exactly where your eraser is going to erase. You can make it bigger. You can change the opacity of your eraser. Same as with any brush. And so you can see where it's going to erase. The next function that's new within Procreate is the selection tool. So if I wanted to select this using freehand, I could go around and select it and it, you can see that it keeps that little line there to let me know where I'm selecting. That allows you to be more precise with your selecting. My favorite new addition, which actually also works if you have an, a, an older iPad. So I'm gonna start with the Minoline brush and a dark color, I'm going to just draw Let's draw some petals real quick. I'm going to show you how to do color drop. I'm gonna select a different color. And usually when you do color drop, you do this, right? And now it has this button called continue filling and you can then continue filling. Previously, I believe this said recolor and it was similar, but this feels a little different to me. It feels more stable. So I could go and I could pick another color while I'm still on that and I can continue to recolor until I like it. So that works with a regular iPad other than this M2 iPad. So you do have that functionality, even if you don't upgrade. To get out of that, you hit the little check, and I'm gonna show you the new functionality of this with the hover feature, which is that I can put my pencil above the little circle, and I can double tap, and it's on color drop, and then I can just go color drop. I can go back up here again, change the color. You can see I'm sort of dragging it around and then I can tap on it. It actually colored everything, which maybe I didn't want. So let's say I wanted to color some of it this yellow color, and then I can just fix that. That is the new functionality in Procreate 5.3. There's a couple other things to keep in mind. The first one is that if you use a pencil other than the Apple Pencil or the Logitech Crayon, your stylus is not gonna work. Procreate no longer supports any other stylus, styluses, you'll have to have one of these. You know, I recommend that you have the Apple Pencil anyway because it gives you the pressure sensitivity that, and all the other cool things that come with the Apple Pencil and just make it really neat. The other thing is that they've changed some things in the compression of files within Procreate 5.3 to speed them up. And the result of that is that you're not going to be able to export a 5.3 file and use it in a former version of Procreate. Typically that's not really going to be an issue because once you upgrade you can't really downgrade, but let's say that you have a whole nother iPad that you didn't update for whatever reason, you wouldn't be able to use files from 5.3 on that iPad. Do I think it's worth the upgrade in terms of buying an entire new iPad? Pro, the jury for me is still out on that. I think that some of the things are really neat, such as I think it's cool that you can see the color and, and what that's going to look like when you put it down. So I'm on the fence. I think that it's cool, but is it worth an entire price of a new iPad cool? I really don't think so. I think it could be, and I think if you're somebody who uses Photoshop and a Wacom tablet, that you might really like it because of the hover feature, but if you started out with Procreate, maybe you're not, not gonna like it as much because that's not what you're used to. So am I keeping it? I don't know, I have a few more days to decide. So if you found this helpful, please like this video and subscribe and let me know if you are planning on purchasing a M2 iPad Pro or if you did purchase one, if you find that it was worth it.